Okay, welcome to the bench in my YouTube channel. Um, this, I believe, is my next repair job. So let's um, unbox it, make sure it's arrived in one piece. Senders info. Oh, okay. All right. Hmm. It's not been packed brilliantly, to be fair. Let's have a look at it. I think it'll be packed a little bit different when it goes back. Have a look. Got a big lumpy radio there. Huh? There's nothing else in there. Let's get that out of the way. Right, well. Oh, cool, he is lumpy. I wonder if the battery's still in him. Aerials, um. been left out across the case, but luckily, I think. Escape to any damage with that. Let's just push that down out of the way safely. Again, the back handle really, you shouldn't pack them with that against the case. You can see there we've got some nice lines where it's been chucked about by the carrier, possibly. And the other thing is, we've got damage to the handle as well. That so and I don't know whether that was uh, done before, but it certainly is now. You really have got to pack these up a bit better than that. Uh, that's, uh, yeah, that's not good. I mean, it might be able to be glued back. I might be able to help them out with a spare one, but um, yeah, it's come unclipped as well. A bit unfortunate. Again, I think that could be glued back. Just to be really careful and try not to use the handle. It also looks like um, looks like the handle's come unclipped from this side. I believe this is just um, a repair job. Let's just get that handle off that and out of the way. It's going to fall apart, else. Yeah, let's get that out of the way for now. Apparently it's drifting. It's a Roberts R747. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, Roberts R747, so it's an AM FM 3-band radio. Uh, but apparently on uh, FM, Radio 3 in particular, it's drifting, so... What we'll do is we'll put some power on it first and have a look, see if I can get it to do the same. So bear with me, I'll just get a figure of eight cable. Okay, I'm plugged in. <coughs> Turn the power off. Actually, I'll leave the power on. Bring them up slowly. So I'm going to have a look at the current draw on it. Hundred volts. 150. There we go. It's just drawing 20 milliamps. Just connect the head. Here we are. It's probably because there was direct concrete evidence. 
when he came to the millions of people across mm -hmm. uh, the world, he may simply not be charitable in any meaningful way, but nevertheless, you know, most people are renowned for inflating their numbers, yeah. uh, and no sign of any scepticism being, being shown, the general scepticism I mean, towards that number. Sounds like God. Dirty tuning control, something up there. Just looking at this handle again, it is actually broken on the other side as well. It's gone there. It's okay on this front edge, but um, yeah, there's not much that can be done for that, I don't think. Shame, but uh, never know, Roberts might still have one. It's worth uh, worth asking. So there's quite a bit of hum from this. It's getting quite a, quite a lot of main sum in the off position. So it would suggest to me that possibly we've got a power supply issue. That is loud. I don't know if you can hear that. Hmm, that's with it off. Oh, that falls. Oh! Volume control is scratchy. I think what's happened has been kept in the same position all the time. Bass and treble seem okay. <coughs> right. Let's get it out of the chassis and have a look. Let me check that power supply out first. That's um, that's a little bit too noisy. Let's get my uh, rubber mat out, just a sec. Okay, to get us out of the chassis, we've got to undo that screw there and this battery tray. They really do stick well, these. <sighs> Comes out. Then we have our transformer. It might just be a noisy transformer, but um, anyway. So to get it out of the chassis, we've got two screws. It's going to be these up here. That's the handle screws. one. Unfortunately these are one of the radios, <laughs> they never come out of the case. I might be wrong, this one might just drop out. Let's uh, just get rid of this battery tray a minute, I'll just take a quick photo of uh, which way around it is. Okay that's the um, battery tray out of the way, I'm just going to disconnect the area and take it out of the way. radio this. Now as I say the screws are, are undone on the side now so that it should just slide out of the case but unfortunately what happens is muck gets down in these grooves here on the front and they stick like glue. And I did have one of these, not this particular one but an RM3 that did actually look like it was glued so, the only way to do it is to try and shove it out from underneath. Mm. 
Oh, he's coming. Oh, ho! Oh. Yes. Well, that came out very easy. That's a bonus. Okay, there's a massive great speaker here. I bet this sounds amazing when it's going properly. Right, let's have a look. Here we've got a loose speaker there, that's not going to help things. Got some real cheap capacitors. Tiny little board for the power supply, miniature. So I wonder it's humming. Okay, battery. And AC. Come on. There's like little tiny jack plugs in here. And there's not enough slack on them to get on them properly. Just get my fingers in there. Okay, and just the speaker leads. And what's this one? Din. Oh, right, yeah, it's a 5 pin din socket. Okay. There we have it. That's a monster speaker. Oh, yeah, we've got an absolutely shot tuning capacitor. It's, um, Corroded right up by the looks of it. So I'm not surprised it's drifting. That is the problem. I wonder if Roberts have got one of those. But yeah, without a doubt, that is the problem. Let's see if it's the main supply is built in there, but okay, that was really humming. So it's been in through that. There must be a rectifier here, which is. There. This is rectified. I expect that thousand microfarad at twenty-five volts here is the um, filter cap. I expect. Then we've got our main IC there, TDA one nine zero four. Certainly the issue is um, that tuning cam. You can see it's gone all white and powdery inside. Now, I have had these apart before, but um, really it needs a new one. Let's see if I can get you right in on it. see that that's where, where are we there so it looks like it's had a snowstorm inside here look at all the white muck, muck inside that um, yeah, I have done one before where I've cleaned it out so there's a possibility um, what a pain 
but that's almost certainly what's causing the drifting issue. So let's wind the scale down as far as it'll go that way. Then what I'll do is I'll tape this wheel up because I don't want to restring this. Please don't let me have to restring this. And uh, a phone call to Roberts then to see if they've got one. Right, I've got to go ahead to carry on and try and repair this um, R747. Um, rung up Roberts this morning. Uh, they don't keep any bits for this anymore. In fact, they, they also told me that they no longer uh, offer a repair on these um, 747s. So, unfortunately, it's somebody like me or nothing now. So first thing I've got to do is drill this lovely screw out. That I, don't, I don't know whether it's a special type of screw, it doesn't look like it, it just looks like a normal num number one Phillips, but um, doesn't seem to turn it at all. I will give it another couple of goes. I can afford to be a bit more uh, aggressive on it now, now that i am decided I'm going to drill it out. Now, oh, absolutely. No good at all. Right, let's get some drilling gear. Right, well I'm using a 3.5mm drill. <laughs> far off. What I'm doing is I've hopefully I've got a drill that's bigger than the actual spindle so as I'm drilling down through eventually I'll hit the spindle and it'll just shear off. That's, that's the plan. getting close now. the head of the screw. Just tap the debris out. <coughs> Don't know that getting any near anything. So there's our culprit on the end there what's left of it. If it'll come off. Oh, we've got the washer as well. So there's the washer. And that is the head of the old screw. There we go. Hopefully it'll come off now. Yay. Okay. So that that's out of the way, that's all taped together so it shouldn't unravel. I won't need to restring it then. Let's just 
just get this uh, retaining bracket off. Holding, yeah, that's holding the circuit board on, I think. And let's find my uh, little pot a minute with the bits in for this radio. Let's pop that little mangled washer in there. We need that one again. Yeah, they're definitely glued all that together with something obviously in their wisdom they didn't want you taking this apart for whatever reason it's a little tiny lock washer one bracket okay Looks like they've labelled it, they've got AM this side, FM that side. And this is really shot, this capacitor. I can't believe how bad it is. You know, I had one with a dead fly in it once, I thought that was bad enough, but uh, yeah, this is worse. Okay, fair bit of desoldering to do now. So bear with me, I'm going to get the um, get the bench cleared back up here again and uh, get the desoldering tool fired up. But here's the culprit. I don't know if you can see inside that. Hopefully you can, but um, that is so badly corroded. I've just marked the top of it for now, which side's which, AM and FM. But, uh, yeah, that is pretty bad. I've not seen one as bad as that before. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, desolder these two, bend them up and then this plastic cover will slide back off. Let me get inside just see if there is anything I can do. So bear with me. Okay, that's the tabs bent, uh, oh, sorry not bent, that's the tabs desoldered. Yeah, that should push those in. You can see I have taken one of these apart before. Not the most fun job in the world, but there we go. Oh, look at the state of that. It's got a lot of corrosion. Um, what do you do with that? Could try a bit of isopropyl in it. That might um, that might mess up the like little dielectric in between. So you got plastic in between the veins. What is that stuff? Okay. What I'm going to try first of all is um, just a brush in and a bit of air. It's almost like Tolkien powder, but it's just corrosion. Can't believe it. Okay, well, I've had quite a bit of success cleaning that so far with isopropyl and air. However, it still is got quite a lot of corrosion, and I can't get in there with anything. It's just too, too far and too fine. So I'm going to try some um, 
So it's electrical solvent cleaner. It says it's irritant, so I'm just going to grab some gloves. Right, I've got the fume extractor on. So I'm just going to um, give it a good go. Over. This looks to be shifting it actually. Well. As you can see, that seems to have got rid of all that um, corrosion. Or well, most of it. Okay, luckily I've managed to get the screw out of the top. Um, I just bent the edges up a little bit with a fine um, craft knife and just worked it around with a little screwdriver and it started to come loose so uh, I've managed to undo it so that's a bonus. This is looking much better now. Um, I think I can put this back in at some stage. I've still got to give it a little bit more a little bit more cleaning but um, I've checked the, the capacitance on it and it is it is looking okay now. So I've just got a little bit more fiddling and faffing about to do with it and then uh, it's going to go back in. I will check it against another capacitor that I've got here just to make 100% sure but so it's really really fine clearance on the veins. I mean the one that we're concerned with most is the very top one which is the smallest of the capacitors and that's the FM one because the customer is an avid Radio 3 listener and this was drifting I'm well, not surprised it's almost like it was growing <laughs> but yeah I've been giving it a good clean up. I've still got a bit more to go on it yet but uh, I'm confident that I can actually uh, get that one up and going again. Certainly a big improvement so far. So this one's now going back in the set. I'm confident that that's going to work. I found another screw. It's uh, a 2.5 M2.5 and I've also got a new lock washer for it as well. So at the moment all looking good. couple wires back in there on my of course I have. Alright bear with me I'm gonna solder this back in you don't need to see me putting it back in it literally just goes back in that hole there. Just pops back in there in that orientation. Hopefully that'll be a job done. Okay I'm uh, just before I solder this in I just made um, a little discovery with this and unfortunately I can't prove it now because it's pinged off somewhere but um, you'll see these wires this wire here I've just soldered that one in from underneath that's going to connect to the uh, tab on the um, tuning coil but I noticed um, when I was uh, turned it over the other side to bend these upright there was you see this wax here well in underneath that wax was another bit of wire like this and I thought you can see there's some other like little links here I thought well it's a link but it's strange because it was going at an angle and it was going from this can over to this um, this polystyrene capacitor over here I thought well it just doesn't look right so I heated my soldering iron up I put, put it in the wax and uh, lo and behold it moved I put a bit of pressure on it and it's just pinged right off. So what's happened is at some stage someone has snipped something off, it's dropped in there and they've sealed it in with the wax on top. Never seen that before. Again that certainly wouldn't have been helping the issue but um, yeah, I just thought I'd show you that. That was uh, really 
unusual and that's the uh, hole obviously this is magnified up full screen now so it's going to look massive on your tellies but uh, that's the hole that the capacitor is going back in I've got it all back together now so I've just uh, got to hook these wires through these holes like that and um, Popping back in. So I'm probably going to clamp that so as it lies flat. Okay, well I'm going to solder that in as I was planning to do before I found that. Just thought I'd bring you back in and um, show you what I was up to. Yeah, that's it all uh, soldered back in. Just going to uh, get some isopropyl on a cotton bun, get rid of the flux. Yeah, really surprised at that, finding that um, stray wire. I wish I could find it, it's just pinged off somewhere. I'll find it when I'm cleaning the bench up later, I suspect. That's all I seem to be doing is cleaning the bench at the moment. Okay, that's uh, nice and clean. Good as new. Just got to get it all back together now. There he is. Before I uh, undo that fully, where's my little screw gone? There we go. I'm going to murder it up tight. I'm going to be careful here, I don't want to cut the flimmin dial cord. There we go. So. So we nearly lost a bit. Ugh. There we go. Okay, something not quite right here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> 180 degrees out. Sod's law prevails. Got him. All right, let's just pop that screw back in.
two uh, solder connections just to do in underneath there. And that we can give it a test. Should have done them first really, but there you go. Make sure they're not uh, left in there this time. Naughty Roberts. Job done. Okay, well, as you can see, I've um, just cobbled it all together for a minute just to give it a test. I'm just going to bring it up on my Variac. Should be no issues. There's nothing near the power supply. There we go. Right. So I haven't done the volume yet. Let's pop him on. Live for us on In Tune tomorrow, playing for the thing in India and Pakistan. Could have also oh, that's much better. atmospheric disturbance, a some version of what's sort of where the town is. Anywhere crops are sitting in the past. I'm sitting here in cold rain. How it goes. Yeah. You're doing well. Everybody it's a nine heat and, and it's very cold here, but we've been lucky. Rain front. Why your name? 30. Back to this evening. Now, the first comedy of the year with a new series of The Cold Swedish Winter by Danny Robbins. It's the road. Oh, I did. <laughs> you were always there for me when I was all. Tell me what you mean you like. Maybe I can take my time. Cool. That's got some bloody volume on that. Jeez. <laughs> Is it the same song? Brilliant. Right. I'm going to find Radio 3 now and I'm going to stick it on Radio 3 and go and leave it playing while I'm having my tea. Okay, well that's uh, Radio 3. And it's now... 6.34. I'm going to come back to that in a bit and um, see how we're doing.